Welcome back to sunny Spain and welcome back to the BMW R1250 RS. Now this was a bike I rode I think in 2019. It was when they first put the shift cam engine into this machine and I loved it. That was a UK ride. Since then things haven't changed a great deal but there's a couple of new features for 2023 including a new eco mode, uh, a rear tail uh, cover, pillion cover, which this bike doesn't have, and a few other refinements. We've got some beautiful warm Spanish twisties out there to really, really test out the handling of this bike. And I tell you, this is a bike I'm really looking forward to riding. Because why buy a GS if you're only going to do road riding when you can get yourself the RS and really exploit the twisties? That's the question. Should you buy the GS or should you really be buying a sports tourer exactly like this one? So if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a, a glass of sangria and Chopsy, roll the intro. back to southern Spain. We're at the circuit of Almeria and basically we're going to take a ride now back to the hotel. I was out here on the video a couple of weeks ago, you may have seen it, riding this very bike here, the R1250 R and to now we're going to try the R1250 RS. Basically the same bike but was styled with a bit more frontage, a bit more wind protection. You know, if you go onto BMW's main site and, and click under the sporty motorcycles, you will see the S1000RR and you will see one of these. This is the full on sports machine using that fantastic 1250 motor. I rode this bike about four years ago when they put the shift cam in it. it was the last time I rode it's quite a long time ago. So it's going to be quite good to sort of see how this you know, refresh my memory of this machine. And also what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a full comparison with this bike and the new Moto Guzzi uh, V100 Mandelo. So I think, you know, I mentioned that I did a full review of the Mandelo a um, couple of months ago, you know, loved it. But the, the, the only real competitor to that machine is this. You know, similar engines, transversely mounted twins. Uh, obviously, the Mandelo's a bit more of a V, a bit more of a V. This is obviously a, mounted uh, 180 degrees on this. But you know, very, very similar. Both are water cooled, both making similar power figures. The Mandelo's a bit less power. Yeah, and you can feel it. This thing is a bit of a rocket ship. Riding position on this is sort of very upright. It's not it's not a sporty position, you know, considering BMW claim this is the, the sports version of, of their of, of this bike, you know, you're a very upright position. Your knee, your legs are up a little bit, you know. Um, but it's not it's not too bad. You've got you don't seem to have any sort of weight over the front of the bike. You know, for a sports bike, it would be nice to have a bit more weight over the front wheel. So that's one, you know, sort of slight criticism. I would like to be maybe cantered forward a little bit to get a bit more weight over the front, give a little bit more feel from the front. But because this bike, and I said this in the R review, I mean, you've got this boxer engine, which is mounted really low in the chassis. And because all the weight is so low, the way this thing dances, from left to right, it's, it's really impressive. Rear brake is really nice, really powerful, nice rear brake, lots, lots of power to it. Progressive feeling. <laughs> Front brake as well. Yeah, this, this is a real pleasure to ride fast through a set of twisties. You know, it's comfortable. You can come, come somewhere like this, ride down to Spain. You know, it's got the comfort, this machine, and then when you get here, done the handle, you know? It's, uh, it's a real eye-opener. And then you're on the power, torque, you're at the next corner, you're on the brakes again. Oh, incredible. Right, let's check the toys, electronic suspension, yeah, we're in 
dynamic mode, we're in throttle response, it's dynamic. We're all set up for the twisties. I love in the sport mode, I love the lean angle display as well. 35 degrees to the right and we've done 38 degrees to the left. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. When I rode the V100, it was in February, you know, it was really cold. The roads were cold, the tyres were cold. You know, I was a little bit disappointed, you know, with, with the handling of the bike. I actually borrowed the, you know, the non-S version. So it was the version with the manually, you know, the sack suspension, not, not the Olin ZC2 electronic system. And I was a little bit disappointed with the suspension setup. You know, it, it was very wallowy, it, it didn't feel particularly sporty, you know, it's a sports tourer, you know, exactly like this bike, sports tourer. Initial impressions is this is much more agile, you know, much, but again, the, the conditions are not the same, so it's very difficult to tell. So we won't know for sure which bike handles better until we put these head to head against each other, but my initial feelings is this is a more sporty ride oh look at this spain is amazing spain is amazing i'm gonna have to get the i love spain t-shirt oh on that blipper see as you rev it you know the power it does pull all the way up to the red line but you know the, the real the power's in the mid-range it's also, you know, as you really rev it, it gets a little bit more vibey as well. But considering you've got humongous great pistons slapping, you know, out the end of the bike there, it, the vibrations are really quite minimal. But they do increase a little bit as the revs increase. You do still get a little bit of a, a buzz through the foot pegs a little bit as well. But, you know, I, I'm... I'm clutching at straws a little bit here. It's it's not severe at all. Feedback from the tarmac it is a little bit vague. I mean, this has got sports touring tyres on it, so you know it's not on super sticky rubber here. So whether whether that's due to the you know the, the tyres, but I mean it's it's enough, but it's not like a you know a full-on sports bike sports naked you know you, you, you've got quite a bit of a dull drive and because you've not got that much weight over the front as well you know that that that, that, that doesn't help as much so you, you've got a bit of feedback but not a massive amount so you have to put a little bit of faith faith in the tires that they will do their job and get you around the corner but it is quick surprisingly quick I can't praise it enough for how, how it changes direction. Honestly, it's... I mean, this is the perfect test for it. You know, this, this, you know, this isn't like riding in the, in the UK, you know. We, we haven't got roads like this in the UK. Well, obviously Wales, except, but they're full of cars, so you may have roads like this in certain places, but they don't go on forever like they do here. And, you know, this is sort of the ultimate handling test, really, you know road test switchbacks and yeah it, it's yeah it's just effortless it's so easy you know, it's, it's I'm putting zero effort in to go you know for a decent pace zero effort and it's just flipping and flopping around the corners so e so easily and it's and you have to remind yourself this white bike weighs 240 kilos how is it doing it Oh, look at these roads, man. The back brake's lovely, you know, slowing down for these sort of switchbacks and stuff. Mostly using the back brake and, and a bit of front as well. But oh, it's brilliant for this. Brilliant for this. <laughs> look at this. This is incredible. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> oh, I love it. 
<laughs> it just encourages you to push on more and more and like I say you're not getting tired it's just effortless this bike weighs 240 kilos just pulled over unfortunately my uh, my uh, camera locked up and I had a fantastic road and uh, oh, I lost all the footage <laughs> that's always the way it was phenomenal back there, absolutely phenomenal. I can't believe how it was so, it was some really tight, twisty stuff. You know, just the way it changes direction. You know, I was right up, I was right up behind the GS. I mean, props to the guy on the GS. But you could see I was a bit all over him, you know. It's definitely got a bit more agility on this. You know, you're a bit lower to the ground. The center of gravity is lower on this. You know, he was having to use both sides of the road and I was able to stay in my lane, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> but I'm, I've am i been, been riding this like it's, you know, like an absolute sports bike. No, absolute sports bike, none of this sort of sports tourer. That was being ridden like an absolute sports bike back there. And what's most impressive about this is just how much drive you have you know you can just leave it in third gear out of all of these bends I and mean, we bang it in third and almost forget it you know bang it in third get your feet positioned sit back on the pegs and just leave it in third gear trip into the corners you know down to 2000 revs pulls really cleanly loads of pull you know then you've got that extra bit of, then you're into the next corner you know absolutely phenomenal phenomenon you can move around you can get out of the seat you can get your knee out you know you can ride it like a sports bike i don't think you'd be any quicker on an s1000r or an m1000r you know you'd be no quicker maybe even slower because you wouldn't be you wouldn't be in you, know, you wouldn't have that drive you'd be having to chase the revs to get the power whereas this you know you've just got You've just got the uh, the torque, you know, and it really it, it rockets you out the corner. You know, propels you out the corner. These conditions are not like what we've got in the UK, you know. But it just shows, you know, how fundamentally good the bike is. That you can do this with it. And the suspension is sporty, you've got lots of support, but it's not crashy, you know. You've still got support. Yeah, okay, you, you may be missing a little bit of ultimate texture feedback from the road you know but trust your tires and it's beautiful i could ride this all day as well i could ride this all day like this when we do our comparison with the, the v100 mandelo blimey that that bike's got a lot to live up to now but you could probably do a track day on this and you wouldn't be the slowest person by any means and this is the thing you know this is why people you know it's an argument that you shouldn't be buying adventure bikes if you want to do this sort of riding if you're not interested in going off road we had this conversation the other day me and greg on our chat you know if you're not going off road there's a lot of compromises you know for, with that gs for example you know 19 inch front wheel higher center of gravity i mean yeah he's He's pedalling it pretty well, <laughs> to be fair. I mean, he's not moving around out the seat, you know, he, he can't shift his weight as easy on that bike as what I can on this. And this is why I think this is, you know, this is ultimately faster because of that low centre of gravity, road-based suspension, and all those things. And, if it, and the surfaces are so good as well. But yeah, absolutely impressed with this. Absolutely impressed with this. I would take this over a GS. I would take this over a GS. Absolutely. Because I don't want to go off-road. I don't want to go on gravel lanes. I'd rather go on mountain passes. I think we needed to have employed the, uh, the drop-off technique because we seem to have lost two riders. Uh, no, I think there's a couple more in there. Well, I've now got 47 to the right as well. 47 to the left, 47 to the right. Yeah, that's it, I think. That's it, yeah. Quickly, bad points with this bike. Slightly agricultural gearbox. 
don't bother with a quick shifter going up really do it manually blippers good 90% of the time sometimes the blipper gets a little bit I've tried to go blip and it won't move but on a whole if you use the clutch to change gear it's absolutely fine slight dullness to the the feedback from the from the tarmac but it is a sport the tourer you know you don't want mega feedback and a, a, a completely compromised ride you want a bit of comfort as well but I think the balance of suspension comfort versus sportiness is obviously helped by the you can adjust it as electronic so I've got it in dynamic you know and if I wasn't going to ride like this I wanted to tone it all down we could go into road mode and get a bit more comfort but uh, apart from those two things, I don't think they're. I think everything else on this bike is incredible. 240 kilos. It, it, it doesn't feel like 240 kilos. To, to push around, to ride, not at all. Not at all. Don't look at the spec sheet and think, yeah, it's too heavy that one. Skip next. If there was ever a bike which you know was a contradiction to its weight, you know, defied its spec sheet. I think this is it your leg position i guess compared to the gs it's a little bit more tucked up you might have a little bit more leg room on the gs but i'm not finding this too you know too cramped in the leg there's plenty of room and i'm six foot three if you're any bigger than six sorry i'm six foot two i'm not six foot three if you're ever bigger than six two and maybe you'll find maybe you would be better off the gs with a bit more leg room but, I mean you can put the panniers on this, you can fit the same luggage on this and you can to the GS. It's got the same size fuel tank as the standard GS, obviously not the GS Adventure. I think that Moto Guzzi has got a hell of a lot of work, got his work cut out for it on our comparison. So if you, if you enjoyed the video and you want a little bit more about this RS, this is like a, a first ride video let's call it. We're going to be putting this bike head to head with the uh, new Moto Guzzi Mandelo and we're going to see, me and Greg, which one we prefer and this will be back on the UK so there won't be any disadvantages with incredible Spanish roads I and mean, I'd love to bring them, look at this bridge I'd love to bring the Mandelo out and do both of them out in Spain, can you imagine? but you know, on the road in the UK which is the better bike? if you like the sound of that, subscribe below and I'll see you on the next one guys, cheers!